Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to get out shed hunting. I love my deer. I need to get back up in CHB. We're probably going to find some sheds. I want to find another deadhead. That would be great. Uh, Caitlin Moss found a tiny shed, but she's down south. A lot of it depends on your area. It depends on the weather patterns. It depends on food sources. There's there's so many different factors because whenever they start shedding, it's a hormonal change. So there's a lot of different factors that go into when they're going to drop. We had a very mild winter, so I expect them to hold on for a little while. Oh, I definitely miss HP. I miss all the herd. I want to try to get a hold of the Valley Buck. Could you imagine getting that rack? That fucking rack would be like yay big. It'd be the biggest rack ever. That's a trophy buck. That valley buck is a trophy buck. He's a monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a competition. HB's Woods is a competition because HB stays on public land. He's a public land buck. So there's a lot of hikers that go through there, and there's a lot of fucking shed hunters up in that area. Toss the coin to your witch Let's have a moment of silence. Jesus Christ, Sean. You know, my birthday's coming up. My birthday's coming up next week. We're going to do a birthday uh, beer bash. Corporal's Corner, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. That's going to be a big-ass fucking steak. And I'm going to name it Joe and eat it. We will get together soon, brother. I promise you. Jesus Christ. That's the... That's the biggest fucking super chat I've ever seen. <laughs> Glory whore. <laughs> God damn, boy. Thank you. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to get with Frontier and, and get uh, get some of that shit uh, down for uh, Streamyards where we can get me and Sean on on screen together. We're gonna have to figure that out. Jesus Christ, a two hundred dollar drop. He he just I mean, he saw me drop a hundred dollars for Kate, and then he goes and drops two hundred on me. Now I'm gonna have to up that, Annie. You see, there's a, a bit of prick waving going on here. Steak and bacon and shrimp. <laughs> Steak and bacon and shrimp and. I don't know, some fucking scrawny little Canadian's ass. My God. Ah, uh, he's gonna be, Corp's gonna, you can bet your ass he's gonna drop another fucking video this Sunday. Did you see that shit he pulled last week? We should take a look at that. We just dive in on his content. Did you see the shit he pulled last week? This man's having too much fucking fun with this YouTube gig. We talk about, you know, some people take YouTube too seriously. Corporal's Corner, man, he's out there having a blast with the, the bills that he's doing. But it's legit. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just bomb him. We're going to steal Sean's content. We're going to get a copyright strike for stealing Corporal's Corner's content right now. Five days ago, this man, let me get this shit up. Okay, look at this heart attack. Starts off like this. But... Look at this shit. Let's, let's get to the shit. I mean, he... Okay. This... <laughs> this is our hero. This is the man we all respect and look up to. Take a screenshot of that. <laughs> we gotta go back. We gotta go back. Watch this shit. Fucking big kid, man. Groovy. Hey, Tina. So, Corp is out there, uh, and this ain't, this is not, I mean, this is nothing I've ever seen before. I've never seen anybody go out there and do this shit before, ever. 
this is not i mean this is some this is some serious shit what's fucked up about it is this is like post-apocalyptic things you remember a couple years back whenever we was talking about doing like some steampunk type shit that's what he's doing right here this is some post-apocalyptic mad max type shit that he's got going on here this is shit hit the fan 10 years after shit hit the fan and he's just recycling this garbage heap into a legit shelter and making fucking stupid faces like that <laughs> We got the best pause moments. Like, we're just skipping through the video now. And we get the best screenshot. I'm going to screenshot this shit. <laughs> yeah, all of his videos is cool as shit because he's thinking outside the box. This isn't uh, rinse and repeat shit. And he said he's having too much fucking fun. But... While he's having all this fun, as far as the creative process goes, it's a legit survival shelter. You don't want to be sleeping in that fucking house. That thing could come down at any time. But, he, I mean, look at the structural integrity of anything that he puts together. So he's out there having fun, and it's inspired by these very fucking uh, whimsical things and, and, having, and just having fun with it. But at the end of the day, this is a legit survival scenario. You know what I mean? Oh, I do too. And I, I, I cannot, I, I cannot even as much as I watch him and I watch some of his videos several times over to figure out how he comes up with a different idea every fucking week. Like I get, like the, the live bushcraft build series, that was a unique idea, but that was one. He's doing it 52 times a year or more. 52 unique ideas a year or more. And that's one video a week. That's a lot of brain power. From a creative standpoint. Like, creatively, I mean, any, anybody that is a content creator in any form, whether you're an edited content creator or you're a live streamer, creative energy is a thing. And you can run out of creative energy, creative ideas, fresh new ideas, and this man does not. It was insane. To be able to see a trash pile, see potential in garbage. Jesus Christ. But, honestly, uh, creative energy is a thing. Uh, that's why you're seeing a lot of channels fail, because they run out of creative energy. It's not that they lose motivation or that they're frustrated over analytics. It's because the metaphysical energy, the creative side, the muses are not there anymore. They just don't know what to do. And that is a struggle a lot of small channels run into. Like they put out a lot of good stuff at first, but then it's like they burn through their bag of tricks within the first six months. And then after that, they just either start repeating themselves or they quit uploading because they don't know what to do next. What can I do? Without emulating somebody, copying somebody, doing what somebody else has already done, what can I come up with that's unique? What can I bring to the table that has any sort of value of newness? The value of being fresh and new idea. That You get that from Corp every fucking Sunday. Like clockwork. Every Sunday. And I just, he's just unique in that facet. But he's always, I mean, that's not me blowing smoke up his ass he's just i mean look at his fucking channel it's a different style every fucking week 52 weeks a year no days off and having fun with it which is the most important thing it's really not about it for him i don't even think it's about the views so much anymore he's just like fuck youtube i'm just gonna go out and have fun and whatever happens happens he's gotten to that point because youtube has fucked him over so bad it's retarded He gets about a quarter of the views that he deserves. From a creative standpoint alone. Let alone the actual lessons. And a different meal every week. Pork prices would be a lot higher if it wasn't for that man. <laughs> Supply and demand. Uh, so yes, from a creative standpoint, it's very difficult to come up with something new all the time. Uh, it's one of the reasons that um, I pay, I, I like, uh, 
as far as my streams goes, this is community news. There's something always, there's always something happening. Somebody either did something epic or somebody did something fucking stupid. That's easy content. It's lazy man content because all I got to do is pay attention. I keep my pulse on the, the, keep your finger on the pulse of the community. You'll have content. And look at YouTube as a whole. It's nothing but content versus content. Thanks.